Thomas Manton IV here. Praise the Lord, dear friend. I am uh, just burning under God's anointing today, and uh, I've been doing a series on, well, I don't want to call it a series. I'm writing a book, and it's just, uh, you know, <laughs> quite an amazing topic. I was thinking that the whole world needs a to that topic, the power of relationships, the whole world. Every person in the body of Christ needs to understand that relationships are the key to everything. Conversations are the key to everything. People are the key to everything. With God at the helm and the, you know, uh, steering the ship, being the great puppet master, not that we're puppets, being the, well, being the captain of the ship, you know, and steering the whole thing and getting us on with the program. I, I've had the most awesome day. I've been in the presence of God and, uh, the anointing is like fire. Today, uh, I, I was going to do an afternoon session, and I just couldn't do it. I just, I just was so heavy under the anointing. Uh, I, I just was doing a couple of other things and <clears throat> getting ready for the evening conference. But before I go back into the, the the conference, I wanted to come on here and just release a few things. Uh, number one, God is. Uh, is the author of your destiny. So, the best relationship you need to have is with Him. I've said that yesterday. I want to continue uh, on that. And you'll want to share this broadcast with your friends and also partner with me and connect with this anointing. Father, right now, let the same anointing, my God, that is on me right now, that's been on me all day and the last few days, let, it, let that just hit my friend watching right now wherever they are and give them the touch as i've received you know i have i can have compassion for people be, when i when i'm receiving so much because not everybody is there and and let me tell you something you even as a brilliant person called of god gifted of god ordained of god favorite of god graced of god still may not have all the ingredients of power that you need on a daily basis to to get you to the point where there's boldness coming in you. You need a leader. You need a friend. You need a prophet. You need an apostle. You need a spiritual revivalist. I mean, to just release that fire on you. And it's it's been happening. It's been happening. God has been doing that for me, and I want to do it for you. That just you, you just get bold, you know, where you were in any way timid or insecure or unsure of yourself or a little bit... Uh, you know, unorganized or, or messy in your own personal life uh, as far as on a daily basis of having a victorious, powerful, productive, purpose-filled, you know, mega day every day, seven days a week. If, if Of course, most people are not doing that. Few, if any, are doing that. But I, I'll tell you it's possible. I want to build your faith. It's possible. Uh, great principle was spoken of great wisdom I said the most important person in your life is the person that builds your faith but also the one that encourages you and challenges you and pushes you and also releases the presence of the Lord upon you father I'm putting my hands on this device right here let your fire go through this device touch your your device right now whatever you're watching this on and let the presence of the Lord touch you. It's like it's be like electric fire, like liquid fire. Release it now in Jesus' name. Fire! Whew. God, so powerful, so powerful. And give them, Father, boldness. I declare, you that are preachers, the next time you stand to minister, the next time you're invited to speak in a conference. The next time you're invited to, to speak, the next time you're in your own pulpit or wherever it is, that the presence of heaven will invade that service. And you'll remember this word. You'll remember this word. You'll remember this word. You'll remember this word. And you'll trace it back. There's a woman of God, an evangelist lady from uh, an African country who was in my services in Nairobi, Kenya, and was touched by the power of God on the floor. I said, I kept telling the archers, pick her up. And uh, she went on the mission field. God opened up all the other countries to her. And she called me some days ago and said that a huge, huge deal is going through in the millions and millions and millions of dollars. 
and she said the tithe is yours because I traced the, the touch of God upon this back to you. I, God, the Holy Spirit showed me you, Thomas Manton IV. You, you were the one who, who released this upon me. And of course, the tithe belongs to you. And I'm going to make sure uh, you, you get that. And this is something that's, I don't want to say how many millions, because it's, it's not one or two or three or ten. It's more than that. And, uh, you know, God is, uh, God is good. And so many other things are happening. I'm, I'm believing also for financial breakthrough. Financial fire. You know what? You need to get in the thick of the, 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 the means to the end of what it is that the... I've got my hands on the, on the phone. The purpose of God. Let the anointing flood like fire upon you in Jesus' name. You, the anointing, the thing that God's called you to do. That only you can do. When you obey him, you're obeying him in that. That's, what, that, that's what's going to bring you favor. That's what's going to put you on top. When you're called of God in the ministry, it's not, it's not that we're so spiritual that we're no earthly good. Don't, don't look at it like that. It's just that it's the call of God. It's, it's the, we're chosen of God, the highest privilege. It's higher than any president, higher than any prime minister, higher than any business person. The privilege that God would use us to be his mouthpieces. And the privilege of me as his prophet that he talks to me like, I'm, like, like someone speaks to their friend face to face to declare what he says in specific detail to the earth. What higher privilege is, is there than that? I, I, I don't, there's nothing else I want to do. There's nothing else I want to be. I just want to do more of that. But of course now we need the finance. We need the funds. We need the resource because... I heard this today, and, and, and I, I met a very, some very, very high dignitaries. In fact, one was a crown, the crown prince of a certain nation, and another one was a political ambassador of another nation who is from kind of like a royal family, you know, a royal family, and they uh, are, are instrumental in building something great in Christendom, Christendom in, the, in, in another nation, okay? And uh, we had time together. And it was just phenomenal, the favor of God, you know, is just so rich. And I'll be, of course, I'll be visiting their countries and their cities. And we're going to have awesome events there and even speak to the leadership of nations. And it was prophesied by my pastor, one of my pastors, my pastor. I, I told him, I, I was with him today and I said, you're my pastor, you know. He says, I love you, man. I said, I love you too. I said, you're my pastor. You're my pastor. And he, and he prayed again for something, a personal desire that I've had and uh, you know and the Lord keeps bringing it up and it's something that will come to pass very soon and it's just it's a very very big 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 thing for the for the prophet's life here very very big thing and um, you know and he told me in another session we were in a business uh, leaders meeting uh, we're training, training some future millionaires, some current millionaires and some future millionaires in business. And he grabbed me and he said, you know, he just looked at me with a gaze of heaven. He said, you know, you're called to, to speak to presidents and leaders of, of the world. Do you know that? I said, yes, I'm very aware. And we've been prophesying and many leaders have read my prophecies about their elections and and things like that, but he says, he says, yeah, and you're going to meet many of them. You're going to, you're going to speak to heads of state. I said, yes, that's right. And uh, I mean, what greater privilege is that is there than that? But what I feel in the realm of like, if we'd call it relationship, you know, uh, relationship and uh, uh, connections and. Of, of, of things you, you think you want to have your life very uh, tuned up you know in every area that you can also host people they can host you you can host them you can have things going in different cities you can have you can have uh, you know just everything par excellence basically you're living on their level you know the people that you're going to minister to 
in the natural, they're looked at is very high, and they're always very rich, you know. You know, uh, dignitaries are always wealthy. You know that. There's no poor dignitary. There's no... I mean a real dignitary. I'm not talking about something, somebody that just came along and wants to run for political office for the first time, and maybe they won the election and they still don't have a lot going on yet. But a person who's a, who's a, who's a mega ruler uh, in, in a society or in business or in uh, government, you know, even in the kingdom, they're well-to-do. So I got to tell you this, and take this for yourself. Take this for you. Take this for you. God wants you to be rich. God wants you to be so prosperous. God wants you to be so organized, so polished, so elegant, so opulent, so well prepared. Everything around you. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to lust for driving the newest, greatest car and, and having the, you know, the most flashy stuff. Because some people, some people really don't. But, but I want to tell you, if you desire that, it's okay. It's available. God made all of it. But you need to have a big house. You need to have a good family. You need to have a beautiful office. You need to have equipment. You need to have good vehicles. You need to have nice clothes. You, you know, man, you know, the, well, let, me, let me just stay in my lane here and not try to apologize for people that want to dress down and all that. I don't understand that. I don't, by the way, I have a small confession to make. <laughs> it's a bit funny. I haven't worn a T-shirt. You know T-shirts? Thomas, here your friend, has not worn a t-shirt probably since I've been in my 20s. <laughs> I don't wear t-shirts. I have always opted for the button down, and now I go for the tailor-made. You see the buttons are in here? My tailor did it that way. The buttons are inside, and then he put this nice thing on the outside. And of course, my insignia my logo which is my initials so it's kind of like it's my own clothing line and I have 40 or 50 of these suits I lost count you know some I I don't know I have them in different places and different houses that I have and uh, and I'm ready to get another batch made you know but these ones are still good the, the material quality is so good you make them they last a while you know and designer sandals and matching watches and all that you know I like I just I just think it's appropriate to dress well, okay? And the Bible says, now the Lord, the Lord rebuked me about this one time because I was praying, saying, God, you know everybody's heart, you know, no matter how they look or where they come from. You know, I was in that kind of prayer mode. I was praying for myself. I was praying for people. I was praying. And the Lord spoke up really loud. And he said, he said, but son, I said in my word that man looks on the outer appearance. Of course, I look on the heart and know, but... Uh, it, on the outer appearance, the first impression of the way you present yourself or carry yourself, not everybody's going to know that how good your heart is or what, but they're going to see you and go, oh. Do you know there was a, a woman of God just a few moments ago uh, was greeting in the conference in the doorway, and I just looked at her, and I was rushing to get in to get seated and then come back out here. And my seats are already reserved in the front and all that. I made sure, because there's very there's a lot of people here. Make sure I got my seats and I come out. And, so this is, so I got this studio in the other place, and this is the studio called Range Rover. Okay, so <laughs> here's the car. So I want to do, yeah, I do that when I'm on the, when I'm on the run here. But you know, the Lord uh, had me notice something on the way back when I was coming back. She had this sewn together long, like sheer, thing that went all the way down to the f almost to the sh shoes and the front was like an African pattern and then there was a, a like like a leopard kind of pattern you know and then there was another thing like white pants and the shoes and it was all flowing so well together I noticed from the back and I looked and I it made me stop listen to God now now listen here listen to this one now made me stop to comment about that the the, the layout of the whole thing how how nice it was, and we started to have a conversation. Turns out, she's from South Africa, white lady, South Africa. Kind of a British accent a bit too, lived in London also. We started to talk, and, and, uh, and I, I said, wow, that's cool. And I said, look at this, I have this tailor-made stuff too, and, and, and we started to talk. And I said, my shoes, though, I was wearing my sandals. I have a pair of shoes. 
like these half shoes. I never hardly wear these. They don't have heels on the back. You just slip your feet into them. But they're blue, some blue and uh, gray, and they match my, they match this. You see? You see that? And they're what? Vanici. Vanici. So Italian. So I just, I just pulled these out. And I didn't wear them in, but I, cause I, so I have to be comfortable. I wore my sandals in and then, you know, the, uh, the, uh, sandals were, were a little bit, still had a little bit dirt in the, dirt in the top of them. And I was just thinking about that. And I said, look, he's, I said, can you see this? And I said, it's because I was, I was with the animals in the game park and she her eyes lit up and she went what i said i was in i was in kenya and she's like i heard they have the most great game parks in the world and i was like yeah yeah it seems so and i told the story about the big elephant that came charging at me and how i how the anointing touched me and touched the elephant and calmed it down and i and i said the funny thing is i could tell the story but what's really even better is that this is on video this is on video, and uh, <laughs> this is on video, and uh, you could actually see it instead of just hearing the story, you know. And I thought, wow, you know. So that brought out that conversation. Now, the point of all of this is relationship, conversation, connection. There's, there's, there's points to talk about. Now, if you're just like looking very uninteresting and you don't have any like, you know, uh, uh, anything to, to discuss, like you just you're all that you have is so nominal. Are you are you, are you getting the point? There's really not much to talk about. You said, well, look at my T-shirt. It was like I got it for, you know, 10 bucks on sale and I got my old shoes on here and someone's going to be like, and and the point is. You know, is there anything else beyond this? So, I don't know if any, if your pastor or pastors would say this. I don't know if who's going to teach on this, but I, I'm a success strategist as well. I, I'm a teacher. I, I, I'm a mentor. I'm a father. I, I, I love you. I want to tell you, make it a new assignment to get dressed for success. Now, that doesn't mean that you always have to be so super elegant. Please don't misunderstand that. This is not a materialistic we're after souls. We're after people's lives getting touched. We're, we're after that. You know, we're not just looking to get things in this world. Woe to the person that just thinks getting enough things in this world is going to be enough to satisfy them for eternity. It's not. We want to, we're going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. We're about the Father's business. But give your life some spice and some flair and something to discuss and talk about. That's good. Conversations, relationships, you know. And if you look like really disheveled and boring, then other people will perceive you as that. The Lord told me that. He said it's so strong. He said, but I said in my word that there is uh, this fact that people look on the outer appearance. And... Um, And he said, you, here was what he said after that. To me, he said, Thomas, he said, I want to tell you this, and you can tell my people this. Please do. He said, you have to make provision for that. You have to make, you have to make that, like, an understood reality. And, uh, because it's a real thing. You know, first impressions, they say, is about seven seconds. Another statistic said, scientifically, you have somebody's attention for about, 17 seconds and then they their mind flips off that's even sometimes a long time so like an intro promo to a message should be like five seconds you know four or five seconds get to it 10 seconds the most if it's like 10 15 it was like 15 20 seconds 30 seconds too long you want to get right into it you want to go like Look at like Joel Osteen's program. Whatever you, if you like, if you're a fan of Joel's or not, it doesn't matter. Is is thing is excellent. It goes da 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 da. da. Hi, here I am. You see, it was about four seconds. And and uh, 
So any good television production, I, I was that reminds me of what I was saying before. There's mosquitoes coming here. The Lord, the Lord uh, 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 had this in my spirit today. I said, if some the day will come, it's coming soon. Because I'm saying it by faith now, but I am a Christian broadcaster. I am a Christian broadcaster. God told me to be on television. And that's why the more I'm on any, any live video feed or whatever, giving a message, uh, I'm doing my job and I'm really more happy and I'm just really blessing the world because, because that's my calling. It's like the Lord spoke to me so strong. He said to me, son, I want you on television. Do you understand that? And I was like, yes, sir, I do. I know, and I know. So it's like, I can say this, like every day that I'm not on is a lost day because it's part of my calling. And I prophesy to myself and I'm prophesying to the wind and to the world. And maybe you have a part in this or maybe it's also part of your deal somehow. Or maybe you'll, you'll partner with me to help in this regard. I, I, don't, I don't just need money for it. I need people. I need the technical teams. I need equipment. We need the space. We need the fees. We need the what? But I, I, I had this, heard this word. It's like the Lord said to me, said, you are a Christian broadcaster today. And I was so heavy under the anointing. You're, you're a Christian broadcaster. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be back. I'll be back in the studio and, uh, we're going to continue in this vein. But I tell you, the Lord wants you blessed. He wants you on top. He wants to empower you. Listen to me. He wants to take all fear away from you. He wants to take all uh, timidity and insecurity and lack of self-image and esteem and all that. And just make you bold. The real you. You know, I had this feeling today. I had this kind of like this spiritual sense. The realms I've been in all day. I felt like. I felt like, you know, I was thinking about other people that are doing well and all that. He said, they're not, they're not better than you. We're all, you know, walking on the earth. We're all men on the earth. And there's no comparison between the two. Proverbs says, don't compare yourself with anybody else. Don't do that. Don't compare yourself with others. That's not wisdom. But, you know, so there's no comparison. But it's like you think of people and you look at them and they're doing well in a certain area. You know what I mean? And you just feel like, ooh, you feel a little bit like, did I, did I hit it so much in that particular area? That it's like, no. My hand, is, my hand is upon you. And the purpose I have for you is there. The Lord even spoke to me a few days ago. Excuse me. He said, some days ago, he said, he said, son, you're going to be in so much demand. Everybody's going to want you. Everybody's going to want you to come. I'm flying to another city in a couple of days and... Uh, uh, we'll we, we'll be in a, been a great conference there, meeting a lot of leaders and, and great prominent uh, pastors and great churches and all that, and, and the doors are opening. And you know, it's just like, it's just like that. So, I, and I, I I'm saying this to encourage you. I'm not talking about me here. I'm talk. If I say it in an example, take it as an example, an example, uh, a, a role model to look at, to to say, hey, you know what? That's what. The big picture is for me because your gift will make room for you. Your talent and your anointing will make room for you. See a person diligent in what they're doing. They'll stand before the greatest, not before just a few common folk. So take that. That's the proverb. I'm praying that God begins to lift you up. This relationship is producing. The Lord is, uh, my time is ending here, but on this uh, segment, this is volume nine, Power Relationships. I, I guess we can call it volume nine, yeah? And the Lord is, the Lord is, uh, is, is going to lift you up. Thank you for being my partner. You can do that on thomasmanton.com. And in Kenya, the m is working on 0792-320-780. If you need to wire anything larger or there's anything that the Lord's speaking to you, because the Lord told me that people that have substantial things, even land and property and even proceeds from very big deals and stuff, the Lord is speaking my name. He said, I'm telling them and they're going to have something for you you need to get in touch with me private inbox me your telephone number okay uh or you can whatsapp me on plus two five four seven nine two three two zero seven eight zero you might be a friend in another country of mine that has my some another direct number for me but i'm this is i'm giving this one out you could use it for whatsapp on whatsapp okay or m pesa so what's at me on that? Plus two five four seven nine two 
320-380-3220-780. Again, please use this phone number to contact me directly via WhatsApp. WhatsApp. If you're not on WhatsApp, download it now. Get WhatsApp. It's phenomenal. Plus 254 792 320-780. And that can also be used for M-Pesa in Kenya if you'd like to sew. Also, there's paypal.me forward sign Thomas Manton. That's a quick way to do it. But all of that's on the website. You can do it on the website on www.thomasmanton.com to sew into this grace for this level of glory I'm talking about. To take your ministry higher. To take your your, your business higher, to take your career higher, to lift you up, to get you f- launched forward, to break all fear, intimidation, timidity, insecurity out of your mind and soul and life completely, that you become bold as a lion. And I'm going to be making some more declarations. I am praying for you tonight. I'm praying for you tonight and tomorrow. I'm praying. For everybody that's watching, you say you're praying for me. Yeah, if you're connecting with me, if you're checking with me, I'm calling those people that are connected with me before the Lord. Now, let me say something else the Lord said to me as I'm about to take off here. The Lord said to me that everybody that writes you a message, you out there, write me a message. Don't just watch. Type me a message. And share this, 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 share this with all of your friends and people that you care about that you want to see them succeed, which should be a lot of people because we need to uh, actually love the success of other people and not be, you know, those haters, you know. Haters are stupid. (laughs) Haters are jealous, mixed up, twisted people. They they don't know what... They're really secret fans, but they're they're mad because they're, they're, they're jealous and they're not succeeding like you are, but they wouldn't be so interested in in, in, in knowing uh, about you if they didn't have some interest. so, But it's very strange. But always be a celebrator. And here's, here's two other things. You always want to lavish favor to people. La- lavish favor on people. Host them well. Love them. Greet them. Compliment them. It, you'll wa- watch. Watch my words. I, I, I've been doing this more and more and more. And I see the results coming back. You, and people, when, when they see you, they get excited. Because you made them feel good. Let me tell you something. People will not always remember what you said, or you may not always remember what someone said, but you're always going to remember how they made you feel. Isn't that powerful? You're always going to remember how somebody made you feel. Someone said a man doesn't marry a woman just because of how she looks or what she has or how she is or where she's from or what. He, he, they get connected because of how she makes him the man feel. Wow. And you know what? You need to lavish favor on people. Greet them well. Be kind to them. Love on them. And you need to uh, uh, show honor to people. Honor everybody. And the Bible says follow peace with all men. Another thing, stop criticizing people. You know, everybody's done that. You have a preacher you don't agree with. Someone maybe you, you, you could even be jealous of someone. You don't even realize it. And you're just angry about something. Or you didn't like the way they did. Or you're just sneering at somebody because, you know, or you felt rejected or you felt overlooked or something like that. Just get over it. Become more mature. Only the Holy Spirit can do that and lift you higher, okay? And then uh, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll begin to understand that we're all in the same family. There are other religions trying to take over the world. There are other entities with these like liberals and all these other other religions and other people, groups of people that are just doing evil, okay? But we're all in the same family, so we should stick up for each other. Repent right now. Say, Father, I repent and I apologize to you for any word I've spoken against anyone. Forgive me. Don't hold it to my charge. You got to be careful. You might have spoken against something or felt disgruntled about something. And someone, and, and you know, it's like it's, it's a sin that's, that's against you because you, you, you committed sin by criticizing someone, especially touch not mine anointed. Let's say there's someone that's anointed that has a great work and you can see that they're, they're doing it and you don't like something about them. So you went, wah, 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 don't, 
don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Be above it. Say, I just, I bless them, fine. Even if you don't like the, something about it, just leave it. Get free from it. Apologize to God. The Lord was telling me that today, to speak that today and tell some people that. Just clear the slate. Here's the prayer you want to pray every day. I got to go, God. First John 1, 9 says, Lord, I confess sin to you anything where I've missed it. Anywhere I've missed it. And I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Now you've removed that from yourself. If I have ought against anyone, I forgive them. Lord, forgive me. God has forgiven us, so we need to forgive. And he said, if you're not apt to forgive, why should you be forgiven? You have to forgive. This is the way you get free, even from disease and sickness and stress. Very powerful what I'm saying here. So I'll leave you with that. And I'm praying Isaiah 48, 17 over your life today that God will teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. You need to be rich, blessed, above only, not beneath, the head, not the tail, full of all kinds of good uh, things and resources. They're all for you because God put them on the earth for you, here for you. He put them on the earth for you to have them in Jesus' name. Don't tell me God made all this stuff for a wicked man to have. No, it's all laid up for the righteous. So claim it. And the way you get more into, I'm going to tell you the how to. The way you get more into being blessed is doing more of the will of God in the gift and call and anointing that he's placed upon you, your life assignment. Dive full into it. Go full into it. And believe God and get filled more and more with the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray that the touch of heaven right now, Holy Spirit, touch my friend right now. Touch my friends right now all over the world. That they get bold as a lion and things begin to uh, just, you know, rise for them. Because of your power upon their life now. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. Thank you for being my partner. Thank you for sowing into this anointing. Thank you. For, it's all about you. It's all about you. And I say that so you could receive a harvest. Remember Paul said, I don't desire that I get a gift, but I desire that fruit abound to your account. Ah, I want, you, you need it. You need it for your purpose. You need it. So that's why the channel is open for that. And that's why God ordained that. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of the Lord. Your blessings, Lord, that make us rich and add no sorrow. I also declare that over the person who's connected with me right now. Write me a message, private inbox me. Go on WhatsApp on plus 254-792-320-780, plus 254-792-320-780. I'll look to hear from you. The Lord bless you, and we'll be talking to you again tomorrow. I love you. Have a great, great, great rest of your day, whatever time you're watching this. And everybody, share this, share this. Share this, share this, share this. And the other volumes before on the power of relationships. So powerful. Talk to you again. I love you.